everyone, I'm Sue and welcome back for another episode of Does This Notion Really Work? And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about The Piping Wizard Ruler by Linda McGeehy. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe below and that way you don't miss another video. And don't forget to also click the little ding button and then you'll get alerts every time I upload a new video. The inventor of the piping wizard is none other than Linda McGeehy. She is an author, a pattern designer, a notion designer, she is a fabric designer, and like myself, she is a craftsy instructor. She has been in the sewing industry for many, many years, and in fact, I have a personal story the first time I met her. I was actually at a national sewing convention and I was representing the store I was working for and Linda McGee was teaching the class. Now this was back in 2000 I think. So when I met her I was a little bit nervous, a little bit excited and I remember I sat right up in front and we were going to make this little eyeglass case and do all kinds of really cool stitching with different presser feet and I remember her like putting her hand on my shoulder and saying, you got this honey? <laughs> I don't know, I just I felt like really relaxed and really comfortable and she definitely was inspirational to me. Now fast forward to the future, I actually had a chance to be a vendor next to Linda McGeehy and that's when our true friendship started. She kind of took me under her wing, gave me lots of great advice and things to do and things to perhaps maybe avoid um, and I mean truthfully she has become a friend of the family. I can't tell you how many times she has come and seen me and I've gone out of my way to go see her and it's always just been um, a really wonderful occasion to see my friend Linda McGeehy. Linda began the design process back in 2008. Now she admits that the first couple were a little hard to manage, a little difficult because of their bulkiness, and overall it helped streamline the process to where we are today with the tool that we know as the piping wizard. She always thinks it's interesting how the husbands are actually attracted to this more than the women at first, and it's because of its technical aspect. It has a lot of detail and accuracy. So let's go ahead and take a look at the piping wizard. Well, let's go ahead and open this up and you'll notice it has like a shrink wrap kind of cellophane protector over it which is really nice it protects the ruler itself i just used a straight pin and we're just going to remove the instructions you could take a quick gander at them they're really basic though it just kind of tells you what to do with it and right now i'm going to show you how to use this it measures two and three eighths inches tall by six and an eighth inch wide you're going to notice there's lots of different grooves the first is the quarter inch piping. It allows for a quarter inch seam allowance. Now flip it to the side and you'll see that deep groove. Hopefully you can see what I'm showing. The next is at the lower edge of the front and it's the quarter inch piping with a half inch seam allowance. Let me freeze frame this so that you can really see the groove and that seam allowance. The groove is where the cording goes and the little extra plastic piece is the actual seam allowance. So now flip the ruler to the wrong side and you'll notice at the top you've got a sixteenth of an inch piping and a quarter of an inch seam allowance and also there's a half inch seam allowance. Take a look at the grooves and you can see the difference in seam allowance. If you go to the lower portion of the back side it is for an eighth of an inch piping, a quarter inch seam allowance and a half inch seam allowance. And again, you'll see the distance. You can use tons of different materials for cording. This is a 16th inch colored elastic. This is an eighth inch rat tail. This one is a traditional quarter inch cording that you can buy by the yard. What's kind of cool is if you pull the cording apart, you'll notice that there are multiple plies to it. So if you're looking for a really tiny cording, you could even pull those apart and right there you've got three different layers of cording. So just something that you can consider for the future. And if you're looking for something a little bit stiffer and heavier, you can actually use clothing line. It measures about a quarter of an inch and you can buy a ton of it for really, really cheap at the Home, like home Depot or Lowe's. And inside you'll notice there's also a cord, so it measures a little bit smaller. 
And then lastly is the half inch wide cording. This will be the largest one that you can use with this particular piping tool. So if you notice in the inside, there's lots of different plies as well. So consider getting a larger one like this and you might find something hiding inside it that's the perfect size. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that you test that your cording does in fact go through the groove easily. Please keep in mind that you are gonna have fabric wrapped around this, but this is just kind of a good quick guide to testing it out. So you're gonna just take your cording, whichever size you wanna test out, and just make sure that it fits into the groove and glides easily. If it glides too easily, you might want to go up one size, and if it doesn't glide nicely enough, then you're gonna to wanna to go down a size. So just have some fun making sure all of your cordings do in fact go through the piping wizard. I wanna make sure that you are clear on which presser feet to use to make piping. There are cording feet, and cording feet are really designed for teeny tiny cords or fibers or yarns or threads to go through those little grooves and or holes. And that's how you attach cording to fabric. But when you're talking about making your own piping, then you're gonna to wanna to use an actual piping foot. Check with your local dealer, make sure you're using the right foot for your machine. Most of them will have some type of a groove on the wrong side. And just, again, it depends on your machine. You can go from machine to machine and it be the same brand and it requires a different foot. Ultimately, you wanna make sure that that cording will glide underneath that groove nice and easily. In order to make piping, you're going to have, again, the cord, which is going to be wrapped around with fabric and then you're gonna use the right presser foot. Again, one that has some kind of a groove or a big space underneath it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna place that cording inside the center of your fabric and make it a couple inches wide. That way you know you've got plenty of space. Set up your machine for a straight stitch. Make sure you've got all your settings correct. If you are unclear, make sure you ask your local dealer how to do this. And then you're gonna place the foot on the machine and you're gonna just glide that cording slash piping underneath the groove and what'll happen is it'll stitch directly into the hole with a straight stitch and as you're sewing the cording slash piping will be created. All right I went ahead and did this on my machine it's all finished I've got a nice little stitch right there and then here is where the piping wizard truly comes into play. You're gonna find the size of your piping which I used a quarter of an inch and then you're gonna decide what seam allowance you want. Well, I don't really know, but let's go ahead and see. The distance for me is either gonna be a quarter of an inch seam allowance or a half, and I really like the way that the half inch works. So we're gonna use the half inch because I think it gives me a little bit more room to play. Place the piping wizard directly over that piping inside the groove and make sure you have the right seam allowance. And then just lay your rotary cutter along the edge and cut. And you can just either reposition the ruler or here's what's fun. You can just kind of do both at the same time. Rotary cutter and ruler moving along at the speed of light. And there you go. Now your piping has a perfect half inch seam allowance. And you might be wondering, you know, why can't I just use a regular rotary cutter or scissors and just a regular ruler. Well, I mean, where there's a will, there's a way, so I'm sure you can. It doesn't make it easier, though. You know, when you have the right tools, it just works. But here's the thing. When you're using a regular rotary cutter and a regular ruler, the ruler's not gonna sit nice and straight on there. And if you cut it by hand, it's gonna just take you some time. So can you? Sure you can. But, of course, this is gonna be easier. I also thought for fun, I'd share with you one of my techniques on how to create piping, especially if you're doing it with like a smaller area. You're gonna wanna use a double-sided sticky tape. I use one that's called Wonder Tape. You can get it in most quilt shops. You're gonna place it down the center on the wrong side of your piping material, and then you can just tear it or cut it off and just push it down really good. And then you're going to need a second piece of the Wonder Tape about a quarter of an inch away from the center piece. Make sure they're both pressed really good and then using your fingernail or a straight pin or something, go ahead and remove both of the pieces of paper. 
Now place that cording directly over the center sticky tape and just finger press it down and simply fold over the piping fabric so that the wrong sides are touching and you're going to kind of finger press right into where that second sticky tape one was and just connect the raw edges the best you can. Now what is this doing? It is omitting you having to sew that extra seam. So now you can go right into cutting with your piping wizard. And follow the same steps you did before, placing that rotary cutter along the edge of your piping wizard. And there you go. Again, it just saved that one sewing step. And I thought it was worth mentioning that if you don't have a piping foot, or if yours doesn't look exactly like this one here, you can also use an adjustable zipper foot. This will allow you to get really close to the cording slash piping without stitching over it and without the foot hitting the cording as well. Ask your local dealer if you are unsure. It's better to be safe than sorry. So who is the piping wizard for? Well, aside from stating the obvious, you know, somebody who wants to make piping, you might want to consider it even if you haven't gone down that avenue yet because it is a way to create consistency. And when we're sewing and we want something to be consistent and accurate, it's nice to have the same ruler or notion or supply to, to help achieve that goal. So I think for me, I do a lot of garments, um, I do some home deck, I do a lot of purses, things like that. I think it's definitely valuable for, for people who are gonna do those types of things. If you're a crafter and you wanna go down the road of creating piping and inserting it into projects, you might wanna consider it as well. And where can you get the piping wizard? You can ask your local quilt shop. There's also a few links below. And of course you can support the designer and go right to her website at geese.com. And how much does this piping wizard cost? Well, it retails for $25.98. So what did you think of the piping wizard? Well, I would love to hear what you think in the comments below and be sure to give me a thumbs up if you liked it and or learned something new. And also follow me on social media. You can follow me at Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. I post there daily, sometimes a couple times a day, but be sure to follow me at Suoberry Designs everywhere. And if you've got notions or products that you have in your stash that you've been kind of like wanting to learn more about, be a friend and leave those notions in the comments. And that way I know what you've got and you want to learn more about. And until I see you next time, I hope you have a creative day. Bye-bye. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe below. And don't forget, you can also follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. Have a creative day. Bye-bye.